Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Dead Film Critics Society podcast. Uh, today, of course, I'm here with Aiden, as always. Um, you know, GBD Reviews, make sure to go check them out on Instagram. Uh, make sure to check out my channel, Reviewing, on YouTube. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Aiden, right. what trivia do you have for us? Well, uh, I want to ask you quickly. So, since we're talking about Sicario today, I wanted to ask you, um, Roger Deakins, right? Yeah. Who is the director he has collaborated with the most? I have to think. Um, I'll give you yeah. the Cohen brothers. I feel like he's worked a lot. Yeah. Yep. They he collaborated with them on twelve films, and the next yeah. closest I believe is Sam Mendes. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, my question is for you, Aiden. Between the two films we're talking about today, both written by Taylor Sheridan, uh, Wind mm-hmm. River and Sicario, which uh, which uh, Oscars were they nominated for? Okay, well, I know Sicario got was nominated for cinematography. Okay. That's one. Editing as well. Um, I don't know if Wind River was nominated for anything, though. I don't think it was. Was it? No. Yeah, okay, so Sicario got most of the nominations then. Um, score? Yeah. Okay, editing? No. Okay, um, no, none for acting, I believe. Screenplay? No. Okay, is that it? Did I... Uh, Anything? no, so it's cinematography, yep. original score, and sound. Oh, Specifically sound, sound editing. Yeah, you're right, okay, fair enough. Anyways, right. um, but you're pretty Sweet. close. And you said editing, so that's like half. So you got like two and a yeah. half out of three, you know. Not yeah, I know, but I, I wanted the full thing. I wanted to win. I didn't want <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, it. let's go ahead and get into the episode. Um, yeah. We don't do news today. Um, no, so we're going to go ahead that. and move to um, the trailer. So here's the yeah. trailer reaction. All right, and we're back. Man, yes. Man, wicked fast. I put on a different um, shirt, and I washed my hair. How cool. Yeah, yeah. and I didn't. Uh, my hair is the same, pretty much. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and go ahead do our tier list today. Um, All right. Last week, we tried to do a, or last episode, we tried to do a Netflix tier list. Didn't ha- wasn't the best. Didn't have too many films, especially it was a little outdated, I have to say. So I did an updated yeah. one. And I'm going to go ahead and share that, and we're going to do a tier list using those films. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary folk, possibly animals too, welcome to the Dead Film Critics Society. I'm one of your esteemed hosts, Aiden Billing. I run GBD Reviews on Instagram, and this is my other esteemed host, Daniel Ang. He runs Review Ang. So today, we have just transitioned from our outfits that we were wearing, and now we're going to be doing a... Trailer reaction. So, what trailer have we got for us, for our subscribers today? Yeah. So, we're going to be reacting to a trailer for the 2021 movie No Sudden Move, directed by uh, fake Academy Award winner Steven Sodenberg. What do you mean also, fake Academy Award he winner? He didn't deserve it. <laughs> what did he win for again? Traffic over oh. Ang Lee. So, oh. no. Okay, that, um, that's fair. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, anyways. But and also he did a terrible job with the Oscars this year. He was like kind of in charge. He was he was a producer. And he was kind of in charge. He seemed like the head honcho, and he messed that up badly. Anyways, yeah. but um, you know he's still a solid filmmaker. I like Ocean's Eleven, yeah. even though I feel like it's the only thing solid. I've seen from him. Sure. Um, yeah. he's got a new movie that's appa- I think it's going it's going to be on HBO Max. I'm not sure if it's going to theaters at all. Uh, but it's a pretty stacked cast. It has Don Cheadle. Uh, Benicio del Toro, Julia Fox, John Hamm, John no not that not two Johns, um, but um, pretty good cast. So let's uh, check out this trailer, see what's about. The trailer. Yep. All right. Um. Said a man wants to see me. Allie, I can't really right. hear it. Can't come in. Here. What is he white? So what's the score? We're sending a man that works in an office to pick something up. You're better? You are yeah, part of a babysitting team watching his family while he does it. Good morning. 
Everything is normal, except... What do you want? Is that something you'd say, normal Monday? I'm gonna shoot you right now. Can I go home now? Wait at the house after. What do you mean after? Right off of your feet. What is going on? What's going on, big guy? Yeah, what are we doing? We're following instructions. Are you helping me or are you not helping me? No, 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 no. Thank you. Set up, man. I called me, offering me ten thousand dollars to turn you in. Fifteen for the white guy. Think you're the only one that can make a move? I can make a move too. I have the keys. I like to listen to the radio. Uh, Organized crime, like the mob. Well, I guess that's the sixty-four thousand dollar question. In it's been a long day. I'll put this over you so I can relax. Thank you. You having a good time? Bang, bang, bang. Knock you off of your feet. So, how'd it go? Take it home with me. We had a little slip up at work. Well, I don't think that's the end of that. Bang, 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 bang. Are you chicken out? Oh. The problem is, you're not smart enough to know how not smart you are. Which makes you unpredictable. Which makes you untrustworthy. Why are you doing this, man? Because I'm going to get what's mine. I'm sorry. I'm going to punch you now, sir. I'm punching you. This is going to be a punch. Boom, boom, boom. Hmm. Start talking. Yeah, you're, you're good. Okay, um, well, I was having a hard time figuring out exactly what the movie is about. I um, would agree, yeah. Yeah, it seems very confusing in typical Soderbergh fashion with his trailers. I mean, I don't think... I mean, because like, I remember there was one trailer. I've ever seen the movie The Laundromat. I mean, it was... The trailer was also very confusing for that. The movie wasn't any better, so I'm slightly concerned here. And that was his most recent film as well, so I mean... I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm slight. I'm like cautiously optimistic because I mean, like, it does have a great cast. I yeah. mean, like, that's yeah. that's stuff in it. Does so, have a lot I mean, of great cast members. Does have that going for it. I mean, yeah. I hope. I hope it does well. Yeah, I uh, awesome. I don't know though. It's a uh, bit of a question mark in my yeah, head right now. Yeah, I think it's kind of. It's like from what I got is that they basically. Benicio del Toro's character and Don Chino will have to like go into organized crime together along with Kieran Culkin, who's like serving one of the big bosses, who I'm assuming is either David Arbor or Ray Liotta. And then like John Hamm is investigating them, and then Julia Fox and uh, Amy Schmetz are like the wives of these organized crime guys. That's kind yeah. of the gist I got. Yeah. But, yeah, exact plot details, there wasn't really a lot. But I think that was somewhat yeah. intentional. Yeah, you know, I mean... There like, seemed I like a pretty long trailer, trailer for getting not a yeah. ton out of it, if you like, to me, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I like to... I kind of like to at least know the, the general premise of the plot. You know I mean? Like, you know, not every single plot detail. You know, I, I yeah. just... I don't know. You know, like, I want a trailer to show enough, but not too much, man. I don't think this movie... It showed a lot, but not a lot that gave me an idea of what the yeah. direction this film was going to go in, so, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it just, like, based on Kieran Culkin eating the french fry, I don't feel like it's going to be taken 100% seriously, especially with Kieran Culkin. Last time with David Harbour as well. Yeah, yeah, so, like, I don't know. I'm not expecting a ton from this film, but it's probably something I'll check out. Yeah. Maybe I we'll mean, talk about it. Yeah, I mean, like, these these films with, like, uh, I don't know, kind of, uh, I don't know, not really out there premises, but I guess, like, um, like, uh, like, Steven Soberg's, like, latest films haven't been, they've been sort of hit or miss, I guess. I mean, but uh, I think his best one recently was Logan Lucky. Yeah. And it sort of feels like that in its tone, so I'm I'm banking on that, like, I'm banking on that, so I, I hope it turns out good. You know, yeah, and really. it still has a better cast than I think most of his other most recent movies, so... I'm yeah. somewhat looking forward to it. Yeah. But anyways, I think we'll head back over. Alright. It wasn't very updated, yeah. so I I did the more updated version. Yeah. Um, anyways, 
Start with Dolomite is my Dolomite. name. Dolomite. Have you watched this yet? I've not seen Dolomite yet. No, I've heard amazing things about it, though. It's kind of, like, been heralded as, like, a return to form for Eddie Murphy because he's kind of been in the, the basement in, f in terms of film quality for a while. So Yeah, it's somewhat true. Yeah. He's definitely, you know, this is definitely one of his better performances. Would not have been unjustified to get, like, an Oscar nomination. Unfortunately, I don't think it was ever going to get there. Uh, but he's very good in the movie. The movie itself is very good. I like it a lot. It's a good movie. Um, yeah. But doesn't have any major major strengths i think the writing and the acting is pretty good uh, it's nothing yeah. definitely nothing outstanding from like a directorial standpoint in any aspect of like cinematography sound or anything like that but it's still a good movie and if i can move it oh, that, great. that would be great this happened last time i swear <laughs> it's the one problem with photoshop even though it looks better it's just a uh, pain in the butt <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some technical difficulties. Okay, there, we go. there we go. Nice. Nice. Alright. Okay. Alright, so where, where would you put this on the scale? Um, since I'm the only one who's seen it, I'd say it's a B. It's a good movie, B? but nothing amazing. Yeah, B seems like a good place to put it. If I can. Okay, that's good to know. Sweet. I'll definitely make sure I check that one out. Okay, All right, B. next. Trial of the Chicago, Chicago 7. 7. I really like this movie. I mean, I, I liked it a little bit less on a second viewing, but I still enjoyed it. I don't know if yeah. it's... An it's definitely not a perfect movie, but mm -hmm. I think just the timing that it was released, you know, the fucking excellent screenplay by Aaron Sorkin and just, like, you know, like... It's a good screenplay. Direction yeah, as sure. well was done very well and the amazing performances. I think all around it's definitely one of the best, like, Netflix original movies out there. Even though technically it really isn't a Netflix original, it was just sold yeah. to because of the pandemic. It was sold to them, but it's like, I'm, I wasn't doing it based on that, really. It was just ones yeah, that were released no. as Netflix movies. Um, That's fair. Um, I'd probably give it, like, an A, to be honest. I'd put it an um, A. Yeah, like, I liked it a good amount, and I still like it. I do think it's maybe, it's probably about the same quality or even worse than Dolomite at this point for yeah. me. So, I mean, like, because I think the performances I, I, are good. Yeah. I do think it really doesn't, like, thinking about it, it doesn't offer anything that new, and it was just very much like a strategically planted movie with like it obviously good amounts of talent both from the screenplay and the performances the yeah. direction's competent this i don't think anyone's going to say it's bad necessarily i definitely don't but um i don't know this movie hasn't grown on me as much as some definitely some of the other best picture nominees of that year and it's just like I don't know. High B feels more appropriate. I mean, I'd rather put. I I would prefer to put it at high A. So I mean, maybe we could compromise for low A or something like that. I don't know. I mm -hmm. guess, but I mean, I probably would put it at low B if I'm being honest at this point. Low mid B. Mm -hmm. It's like we just uh, put it in. All right, low. fine. I you know, man, you don't think it's better than Dolomite? Okay. Yep. Okay. So, about as good as Dolomite. I'd say. Mank. Mank. So I guess we kind of also disagree on this one a little bit. I think it's. Um, I think it's like a. I think it's around a B as well for me. Yeah, I didn't like it that much. I think it was. Okay. I would probably put it low A. I think I. It's a good, very pretty good movie. All right, we'll put it in B then. Let's put it in B. Oh, uh, nice. my octopus teacher. Uh, so yeah. this ended up winning best documentary. Yeah, I enjoyed um, this one quite a bit. This was a good yeah. movie. Solid. Yeah. Again. Great don't know if I put in A though. It's like I like yeah. it, but it's like I think it's mid B. Yeah, I can just put it there for now. Yeah. Uh, Marriage Story. I have not seen this one. You have not seen this. Well, this is a very good movie. Um, you should see it. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, I still need to rewatch it, but I come maybe it might move into S even. But at the moment, I'll just give it A. Uh, mm -hmm. Uncut Gems is another one you haven't seen, right? Nope, I've not seen this one yet. You should probably see it. Um, it's really good. Um, but it's it's also very good. I like it a lot. Yeah. One of my favorite films of 2019. A. But both of those are my top ten of 2019. 
Uh, Mitchells versus Machines. We talked about this I on the podcast. An a. Honestly, an a. Yeah, I loved it, man. It was fucking hilarious. I've, I haven't laughed I mean, that hard watching an anime movie in a long time, to be honest. I mean, I want, I probably laughed more during Soul. I'll be yeah, I'd have to agree. I, mean, I laughed during Soul, but I, I, I think I laughed more during this movie, to be honest. I mean, um, yeah. Definitely pretty funny. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I I, I think like, I, I yeah. I I like it a decent amount, but for me it'd probably be like mid B, or mid to low B, probably. Yeah. It's like, All right. Well, since I, I, like I put around... yeah, let's just put it in high B. High B. Yeah. Okay. Just... Yeah. There we go. <sighs> All right. Anyways, um, Klaus. I have you seen Klaus? I have seen Klaus. Um, okay. Well, I really did. Good. I did enjoy Klaus as well. It was very heartfelt. I enjoyed yeah. it quite a bit. Yeah. Good Christmas movie as well. Yeah. Interesting. I think it's pretty good. Um, good voice cast as well. Yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah. You know, I think it really did a pretty good job of capturing the like the spirit of Christmas. Even though that sounds extremely cheesy to say, but and it was yeah. a little bit cheesy, but I think it kind of earned that. Yeah, uh, for sure. I kind of like low A for this one. I don't know if you're cool with that. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Side of A. Yeah. Uh, the Irishman. This is another one yeah, you haven't seen, seen yet, this. right? This one's like yeah. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Um, I like it a lot. It's really well paced and really entertaining for a three and a half hour movie. It kind of blows by. Honestly, it's pretty good. Um, it's a great movie. Low A. Um, the woman in the window. Uh, so we talked about this, right? Yeah, not very good. Wasn't very good. Um, no, but I think people it's not maybe, the worst film ever. It's not the it's worst like, thing in the world. The cinematography, I, I still think, is pretty good. I think it's a little. I think that's something that people should be somewhat praising, even though the I think film it's a D, to as be a whole. I think D it would yeah. probably be a good place for it. Uh, Army of the Dead. This is that's pretty, like a C, to be honest. Uh... See, I don't like Army. Of the, no, I don't know if I can do that because I like our. I don't like Army of the Dead. I think it's worse than okay. the woman in the window. I would have to disagree with you there. I think that's kind of a. That's. I, I wouldn't. I would not agree with that. I it's think it's much. Better. The woman in the window is much better cinematography, in my opinion. Okay, that. yeah, but at like, the end of the day, but like I had way more fun watching. And I also the, fell asleep oh, watching Army of, Army of the Dead. At least I was somewhat paying attention. I like. I mean, went, uh, versus I was the woman in the window. I was I pretty bored phone. watching the woman in the window, to be honest. I mean, I mean, yeah, didn't really. Again, do I fell asleep watching Army Dead, so uh, I, don't, I don't know how I can put in C. Fine, so fine. I'll humor beside, you. I'm, I will humor you here. Put in we'll D because I would put in E personally. So I feel yeah. like that's kind of the compromise. Uh, hey. I'm thinking of ending things. You know, hey. I really like this film. We hey. talked about it just on the last hey. pod. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm okay with putting it A, even though it would personally be an S for me. Um, yeah. Vivo. Vivo. So this actually hasn't come out yet. Um, <laughs> I put it so here how because... supposed to rank it? Just as a reminder that you should watch it, uh, but we're not going to rank it. But it was uh, just a reminder you should look out for it. It comes out in July, I'm pretty sure. July 23rd, right. if I remember correctly. Uh, I think this is the last film I have on the list. Oakja. Oakja. I think yeah. we actually used this. This was in the last tier list as well. Yeah, but still, um, it's good to talk about still, it again. It's Great film by Bob King. Um, yeah. Again, I'd probably put it. I like this film a good amount. I need to revisit it, but I yeah. had a lot of fun. The performances are really fun. Oh. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal is maybe having too much fun or going too. Yeah, you kind of choose the scene. I always little remember bit, that. Okay. Um, yeah, Charles Swin's great like, in it. Juan Carlos like Esposito's in it, which is kind of weird. He's like, yeah. barely, he's like, he barely, he basically makes a cameo. It's a pretty stacked yeah. cast, but um, anyways, I like Loe for that movie. All right. Um, yeah. So this is our Netflix tier list. Um, you know, watch Vivo, I guess. Look yeah. out for it. I think it's sub film. Do you want to start with? Well, I yeah, that's a good question actually. I mean, let's start with Sicario since you and I have both seen that one already. Sure. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. No. What do you want to say? I, I want to try to give you more opportunity to speak because I did a lot of Thank talking, you. especially last episode. No, so. it's okay. It's, I, I should have been more prepared last time, but this time I think I'm way more prepared because I got to tell you, man, seriously, I love this movie so much. This is the fifth time I have seen it, and I got to tell you, it's even better this time than the other four times, you know? I just, 
I love everything about this movie. It's so beautifully crafted. Like the cinematography, just it's immaculate. Especially like my favorite scene in the movie has to be like when they're like have that like kind of standoff at the border, and you know you just hear the fucking like roaring score like and as they're driving over the bridge. It's so cool, man. Like just it's it just looks fantastic. I also don't mind Emily Blunt in the lead role. I don't think she's obviously yeah. Oscar worthy, but she does a good job carrying the film. I think the script was also done very well, and I think Denis Villeneuve's direction is just fantastic throughout the entire film. He really, especially like scenes like the the night vision scenes. I think those were really cool, to be honest. I mean, I think he did a great job handling that. I mean, I think compared to a movie like I think we talked about this already, like Zero Dark Thirty, where they also did a night vision scene, and wasn't always clear what was going on. But I think in this movie, they did a better job with that. So, I yeah. mean, yeah, that's kind of just that's kind of my main thoughts on it, to be honest. What what do you have to say about it? Um, yeah, like, one thing I noticed for sure is the uh, more about the second time watching is, well, other, other than, even the cinematography, I think I didn't appreciate as much. Yeah. It's like, it's truly a very, very good looking film. I mean, oh, Roger clearly yeah. knows what he's doing. You know, it's, it's, I, I yeah. can say, you know, it's really good. It's not the be- even the best from Deacons, but, like, you know, he just comes out here and just, like... Yeah, I mean, like, even his, like, like mid-level work is still, like, Oscar yeah, worthy. So it's still, you like, know yeah, exactly. It looks good. It's yeah. worthy of not, yeah. Uh, yeah. The sound I appreciated more uh, the yeah. second time around. All that's very well done. The gun yeah. sounds, some some knife sounds like the, you know, it's very brutal, very cutthroat f- feel to it, and that's how it should be. Um, yeah. Also, I, I love the moment where the truck just, like, rams into the back of the house. Because even watching it the second time, I didn't remember they did that, so it was kind of unexpected. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure. That, I'm pretty sure they did that mostly practically. Um, yeah. The music again, I think is, you were talking about a little bit for that one scene, but also it just works really well. Just like as hell, just like basically amping up the beginning of scenes, just helping like you know. Yeah, exactly. With those like long shots of like much. the locations, yeah. and then just the haunting, like the yeah, the beautiful the string score. Sometimes. Yeah, and you know, Johans like. Specifically, I rewatched Arrival recently, also from Johan Johansson. I probably messed up his name, but um, his work is really great. Um, unfortunately, he did. I don't know if you knew this, but he did pass away. Uh, yeah, a few I did years see that ago. actually. Yeah. Um, sad because well, obviously, you know, talented, did, talented man for sure, but also, composer, you know, yeah, just, yeah, he did a great job, and I appreciate his work a lot more having seen seen and heard it a couple more times, and it works really well here. And also an arrival. Um, yeah. Again, another Denis Villeneuve film, and again, Denis just shows that he's one of the best filmmakers working today. Oh yeah. Um, Jesus with this film, working with very talented people like Roger Deakins, doing a good job with the cast. Even though I think it's maybe one of the weaker parts of this film overall. Even though it's not, it's not weak by any means. I think I still think it's good and solid. Also, some lines of dialogue felt a little odd to me, especially particularly from Emily Blunt. I don't know if it was the way she said them, but just especially that one reaction that stuck out to me, like the reaction she has after they like get back to the base after that, after they went back in the border and across. Yeah. I, I just remember whatever her saying just like kind of felt off-putting. I'm trying to remember yeah. was it, what it was. Like something about it being illegal. Just the way her attitude about it wasn't like I don't know. It wasn't didn't seem like it was the proper one. It should be like more scared and confrontal rather than just like confused and scared a little more. And I mean, that's kind of her throughout the whole film. Even though she's kind of supposed to be our, what I kind of got is that she's supposed to be our lens into whatever's mm. happening here. That we is only true. we only know what she knows until like the very end of the movie. Because then, frankly, it kind of becomes like the protagonist kind of switches. Which, especially watching the first time, is kind of um, jarring. But you know, knowing it, like especially the fact that Sicario means hitman, it's the film's technically about Benicio del Toro's character more. Yeah. We're just seeing it through Emily Blunt's character's lens. No, that is true. Um, I mean, like I, I think that's specifically. most apparent. Like once we see like his little like escapade at the end, where he takes out the uh, cartel yeah, boss. Yeah. I think that was pretty cool as well. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah, like, it wasn't a crazy action sequence, but I think it was just, like, done very, pretty well, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it was 
Yeah, I just think, how again, quiet it is as well is mm -hmm. makes it even more eerie and that much more intimidating. Yeah, and again, for reasons like that, I wish I saw this in a theater because I think oh, it definitely yeah. would have elevated the experience. Yeah. Um, again, I think and part of the reason I was like, I think so, the screenplay is like it's good. It, it could have been better. I think it doesn't feel like it has the most. I think Taylor Sheridan specifically is a little bit ambiguous and not as specific with the messages. He wants yeah, to get across with the you, ideas. I definitely hear you there. Because while there like, clearly yeah. are some floating around, none of, none mm. of them really feel, feel honed in. Yeah. Um, again, I think that opening scene is very good for the movie, and it kind of, it kind of feels like just the whole sort of thesis of the movie. It's like yeah. you know, obviously they're tackling crime, but then, you know, the normalcy Bomb. of the house. There's like you know, there's a deep dark operation and disturbing method of yeah. you know it's like the operation like if it appears somewhat normal they're just trying to fight you know the drug war but then obviously yeah. the methods they're using are a little bit disturbing and dark a little bit dark and a little bit illegal um and again the way it's approached is brutal and that works very well and again i think denis like i think the way this film was taken is that there can all there like all this was going to do was just kind of create more chaos, frankly. And you yeah. kind of, and that last scene really hones that in, reminding that, like, despite the fact that, you know, the idea that, you know, if you take out a major drug lord like that, you're helping, like, get drugs off the street, you're helping people, keep more people safe. Um, that last scene kind of reminds us that there, it could, all it might do is just cause more conflict. And something yeah, exactly. and that might even get closer to, like, the civilians, as you, like, see the kids playing soccer. And then also, that scene also, that seems maybe one of the best in the film, or at least it works very well as an ending scene, because then yeah. it reminds you also that, you know, even though Benicio Del Toro as a character was trying to do all this to avenge his family, all he ended up also breaking apart another family um, yeah. with innocent people in it. So it's like, is he really better than them? And that's yeah. kind of the same thing that, uh, the drug lord mentions is like is the u.s government better than like us really like you know we're they're doing they taught us how to operate basically it's like whatever they were doing against them was like how they chose to operate because there is a lot of this also reminds me of the idea there is a lot of speculation that the u.s government has a lot to do with why the drug trade especially in mexico and the areas below the United States is so bad is, is somewhat because of them and the things that they've done in those nations. And, yeah. You know, and then it feels like this drug war is only to try to keep it out there. They're like, they're not necessarily concerned for the health of Mexicans. It's clearly only about like, they basically like, you know, if something like what they were doing in Mexico happened in the United States, you know, people would go crazy it would be nuts like you know the like the gover all the political politicians would be pissed the government would be pissed like the president they even mentioned a line where like the president's like mad that just one house had like a s explosion like people were completely mad over that but then of course you see literally in one in like one scene where they're like looking over to mexico how like there's multiple explosions and there's guns and yeah, you see exactly. all sorts of it's police like officers happening there. exactly yeah. right and it's like you can kind of see that like when thinking it's about it, the, I guess, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the government doesn't really feel like they're only, they're only they don't really necessarily care about people all that much. Their only objective is to make sure that the people who have power above them aren't mad because they're letting more conflict into their borders, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Not necessarily about you know making sure people in Mexico are more safe. It's more about yeah, keeping by just, taking out major drug lords that it'll be contained more to their area, which it's what it feels like at the end of the movie, especially. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um. In in that way, I think when you, and I feel like you know I don't think Sheridan does the best job at like honing in those ideas very well, but he leaves those up to like where for the like for me and the audience to grasp on. I think he does a good enough job at that, which is why I think this is probably his best screenplay. Um. Maybe yeah. not his sharpest plot wise, but definitely more in ideas it is because yeah, no, all of his I other did. ones don't really have like I think Wind River the other one we're going to be talking about definitely has more messages hell or high water and those who wish me dead sort of have one some like yeah. hell or high water has some ideas about the state of like the american economy and what it's like for the average person especially in yeah. the southern states or i guess not maybe not particularly just in general but yeah. and then those who wish me dead has the idea of forest fires 
Um, but obviously these two feel like the one where he's trying to put the most messaging in. I think he does the best job here for sure. Yeah. And again, I think the plot's still well done. Like, it's never unbelievable. Like, it's never like, oh, how could this happen? It's like, it makes a lot of sense. It, you know, it's very easy to keep track of what's happening, like, with their plan of, like, you know, trying to force this, like, getting the brother for information, finding out the guy in the United States who is, like, uh, a partner with the guy, the one of the major guys in Mexico. So they try to they mess with his bank account, so he gets called down to Mexico, and then they follow him, and that's how uh, Benicio is able to get down to them in order to kill them. Yeah. Um, there's a good job, like the part with the elastic bands is well done because like yeah, that was a pretty making tense sure scene. yeah, oh, making yeah, sure yeah. to like you know make sure those were like clearly visible in the scenes before that and also the one where like the the character has it in his hands and then of course that slow like changing of focus to show that the elastic band is like clearly in focus even though watching the second time i'm pretty sure there's a shot of it before that um yeah so it's a little less revealed the first time you probably wouldn't notice it the second time you definitely do yeah um yeah I think Josh Brolin's character is also a little more boring. Like, both him and, like, despite him having probably the third most screen time, maybe arguably almost being a bigger character is Kate. You just, like, you just kind of, I don't know, you just talk. None of these characters necessarily 100% feel like they're fighting for their own causes, except for Emily Blunt and, um, like, like, I guess, I don't know if that's true. Um, I don't know, just Josh Brolin's character doesn't get a ton of depth, really. Not yeah, that only, there was a ton of time to, and not that it was necessarily necessary. The only thing I really know about him is that he's just, like, kind of really just working for the bureaucrats, and he loves cargo shorts, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, and he likes wearing too. flip-flops around the, the office. I think those are like, Keens, actually. I could be wrong, but, I mean, I don't they know. They definitely looked like flip-flops. I don't, what, are, what are Keens? He wore, he wore a couple of different What shoes. even are Keens, though? They're, like, they're like just, just another type of sandal, you know? So, um, yeah. it sounds like some white people shit. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is some white people shit. Um, yeah. yeah so Anyways, weird. all like again, it felt very believable and thought out. Yeah. There's clearly some like purposeful ideas, and I think, and again, Denis handles it very well. Um, even though I think there are, he could have taken maybe a couple more risks, but Roger, you know, Roger knew what he was doing with all. Like, I don't think he took too many risks, and Roger executed everything. Because some of it, like, from a lesser cinematographer could have been seen as a little more standard. But, you know, cinemat- Roger knows how to bring out the beauty in even the more simpler of situations and areas. So he yeah. does a good job with that. You know, that sunset is moi. Uh, oh, yes. Very nice. Anyways, and yeah. So score, what do you want to give it? Um, yeah, this is a great movie. Um, again, I do have some problems with it. Uh, like, I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's Denise's best direction. Um but I, I, it's still very good. Eight out of ten. Good, good, very good movie. I'd have to go up just a little bit there. I, 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 I just love it so much, man. I can't even tell you. I mean, like, I, I don't know why it keeps getting better every time I watch it. I, I, for me, it's like it's almost like a film like The Dark Knight. Just because, like, I've loved The Dark Knight even more. Yeah. Like every single time I see it, just because I notice more things, and I think that's why it's a little bit more special for me and higher up on my list. So I'd probably give it like a nine. To be honest with you, yeah, I th- I love it a lot. Yeah, no, I wasn't the biggest unjustified. fan of the sequel. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the sequel. Yeah, that also feels like proof to me that Sheridan did not like. He's not the reason necessarily. This is a great film. It was because of Denis yeah. and Roger. Even though yeah. I have to assume also he did a better job with the screenplay on the on the first one they did with the second because he was no, writing I mean, like, by himself did, for yeah. both. Yeah, like, the second film just, I don't know, it just feels so weird, because, like, why do you why do you even need to follow an Oscar-nominated film like that with a sequel? Like, the story kind of ended pretty naturally, you know? Yeah. It's, not like the, it's not like the film was, like, a a big, like, money grabber. It didn't make too much money. It made around $80 million, so it's not like it was a billion-dollar movie, and that's why they need to make a sequel, but I don't know. I just, I didn't I didn't think anyone was really clamoring yeah. for Cario's sequel, you know? No, not really. It, felt, it does yeah. feel like a weird move thinking about it, um... They did have some talented crew behind it, though. They had, yeah, it did. You know, there like is the, one scene in that movie that I really enjoy, and that's like where Benicio del Toro is getting chased in his car by the cartel, and you see it's like one big take, and the camera's like spinning around the car, and you can kind of see okay, him like cool. toss a grenade in there. And yeah, then um, and part of that's that. A, might, yeah, the cinematographer from that is Darius Wolski, who did cinematography uh, for News of the World, The Martian. He's pretty good. 
Yeah. Game, so that makes sense. Also, it has the composer from Joker actually working on it. I don't know oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Worked on the sequel as well. So I was like, yeah, I think the director wasn't as strong as them. It's like, again, in it, like, well, as much as this feels like Roger Deakins' film, especially to a mm -hmm. lot of people, yeah. Denis clearly knows how to, like, Roger... You know, he needs good people to work with. He can't do it all by himself. And clearly, Denis and Taylor Sheridan are good people for him to work with yeah. to make a good movie. And exactly. uh, again, your 9 out of 10 is definitely not unjustified. I, yeah. You know, I might be giving it that in the future. I gave it only a 7 the first time I saw it. So it went up at least yeah, 1. It's an eight. Yeah, there you go. Um, See, because so. like, the first time I saw it, I probably would have given it a 7 too. Because I actually fell asleep the first time I saw it. But. Yeah, I know, right? I can't even believe that. It's so weird. Like, but it was it was yeah, a late. Because so again, like, that's another thing. Like, it's a very entertaining yeah. movie. Like, it's a full two yeah. hours, but like none of it ever feels boring or not. No, at, at least all. it doesn't for me now. Also, yeah, yeah shout out to yeah. my boy Daniel Kaluuya because he's cool. Oh, he's yeah. cool. And uh, not that he does a ton in this movie, but he's there. And, oh yeah. Uh, he's gets a couple of sort of snarky lines. It's, yes, he know. does. Yes. Anyways, um, let's Wind go River ahead. Now. Let's go yeah. ahead and move on to Wind River. I feel like yeah. I should always be doing this, but I forgot to... So in case you didn't get that from our discussion of it, Sicario was a 2015 film directed by Denis Villeneuve, written by Taylor Sheridan, cinematography yes. by Roger Deakin, starring Emily Blunt, uh, Josh Brolin, Benicio Del Toro, and Daniel Kaluuya. All right, cool. Yep. And John Bernthal, because uh, yep. he's literally in every Taylor Sheridan written movie. Yeah, um, that is true. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, Wind River... Uh, yep. It's a 2017 film directed and written by Taylor Sheridan, starring uh, Jeremy Renner, Elizabeth Olsen, yep. uh, Gil Birmingham, John Bernthal, yep. and I'm trying to remember her name, Kelsey Asb Asbill. Um, yep. Yeah. So, I don't know. What did, like, this was your second time watching it. Yep, second time uh, watching it. Did you see um, it? What, how did you see it the first time? Did, was that uh, the first time I watched it, it was on Netflix. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's just been on Netflix for a while, right? So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I really enjoy this film as well. I think, like, it's a pretty interesting, like, story. It's, like, a bit of a, you know, neo noir type of, like, western as well which yeah, i sort of like i like i like yeah. that kind of i like that kind of vibe i like movies like that another great film like that is sheridan's other film hell or high water and i think you know for the most part he does a really good job with this film i don't like it as much as sicario i mean like, i think there are but i think there are a lot of strong elements to this film and i mean i think yeah. that uh, jeremy renner and uh, elizabeth olsen work pretty well as the central leads i think they do a fine yeah. enough job during this film you know i also like the That's cinematography fine. not too bad yeah the script is in is okay it's not my favorite part of the film though no i mean I, yeah like, it's, it's definitely not bad though so what think, is the best part of this film i think the best part of this film i don't know i just like the whole i just like the story in general i think it's okay. like a really cool story but and then something that i don't know that we don't hear about a ton of movies these days because it's dealing with murdered and missing and raped indigenous women right and yeah. that's a huge you know talking point especially now in our mm. country of canada right so i mean yeah. you know i um, think it was it's interesting that uh, he decided to, you know, add that in the yeah, story. Yeah, it's good that he decided to yeah. tackle this. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. well done, for, especially for directorial debut. He clearly picked yeah. up some things from Denis. Oh yeah, that's right. David it was his directorial debut. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's definitely yeah. good, impressive. Well done. Um, yeah. I do think he's going on a little bit of a downhill trajectory, just in time, yeah. just within all of his scripts slash his direction. Because Sicario, yeah. I think, is the strongest. Hell or High Water probably follows that. Wind River is a little, I think, is a little bit weaker than both yeah. Hell or High Water and Sicario. And then I think, obviously, we both agree that Those Who Wish Me Dead is probably his worst film. Yeah. But, um, and hopefully he gets that better. That one's bad. It's just, like, kind of average, you know? It's, yeah, I don't, like, I don't, yeah, again, I don't think it's really terrible, but it's, like, yeah. it feels like there could have been a lot more done with it. Exactly, um, yeah. yeah, like I said, the cinematography is well done. It's nothing amazing, nothing great. Yeah. No Deacons, um, but what is... Uh, the acting's good. It's fine. I, I didn't yep. stand out too much to me. I thought that the character of Martin, played by Gil Birmingham, was maybe the best. Even though he's yep. not he's not amazing by any means, but he's, he feels a little bit standout compared to the others. Even yep. though everyone's like good, I guess. I think the story, again, kind of like all of his films, they're well they're well thought out. At least it's clear he like has an attention to plot, and they feel yep. somewhat believable, except for that thing. 
Especially from, but, and that's why those who wish me dead feels like his weakest is that one moment. He doesn't, he nearly, like, there's, like, a little bit of gaps in some, especially this screenplay. But the biggest one of all from those who wish me dead was the, the forest fire thing and how they didn't notice yeah. it. Like, he didn't feel like he thought that part out. He think he thinks of, like, the scenarios better in all of his other films, and he does a pretty yeah. good job with it here still. Yeah, no, I'd have Maybe. to say, I mean, like, I, I like how the plot slowly, slowly reveals itself. Like, we finally see, like, what happened. Actually, that wasn't actually the yeah. boyfriend killed his girlfriend. I thought that was kind of interesting. I, you know? I don't love the reveal. The, I, I don't, don't know. I think it. it's okay, but I, but then it, but it does give us a really cool standoff at the end of the film. So I mean, it does, but I feel like they could have done that without it necessarily. Like, yeah. uh, the, the cause for the standout and for the last part of the film, like this, the 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 sequence itself is good. Oh but yeah. What like yeah. how That's it, my favorite scene in the film to be honest. Yeah, Aside from the pepper spraying scene, I think that one's also really good. You know. Yeah, but like how it led up to that felt a little weaker. Um, yeah. Just like, okay, most of the dial. I think the dialogue is maybe, I don't know, it's good. Again, I don't think it's anything amazing. Yeah, it's no, no, it, it, it works perfectly with the story. Yeah, you know? it it's might be crazy. have better dialogue than Sicario in total because, like, there's nothing yeah. really... But all of his films don't really rely on, like, specific dialogue moments. Uh, they're mostly from, like, action, fil- action scenes that aren't big action scenes, of course. But obviously, you know, they have some sense of scale. The yeah. c- the crocodile moment is cute. That's probably the thing that's gonna like you know Fort Lauderdale. Here's here's a crocodile, but it's yeah. actually an alligator. Um, I didn't find that the like the reveal that surprising because like as soon as you met the oil workers and the, like just the way they were talking and the confrontation, yeah, you just kind of get the idea that they're they you know. I mean yeah, I, if, just, I, I didn't know. I if was exactly just like oh well they, they they did something. Yeah. I was like immediately when all that stuff was happening and the the way they were talking to yeah uh, Jane Elizabeth Olsen's character was like okay they did something. Yeah, the only I mean, reveal for me was yeah. that the boyfriend was completely innocent. I thought that they might have helped the boyfriend. Cover yeah, no, up same thing. Like I thought that they were and just then like they revealed. Wrong. That in, and then of course they yeah. show it's John Bernthal and I immediately thought okay they're really gonna have John Bernthal as the bad guy now because like he literally has I don't think he's never been the bad guy in any of uh, Sheridan's films definitely isn't in Those Who Wish Me Dead actually sort of is I mean yeah he kind of is in Sicario so like I guess it was possible it just didn't feel like I don't know him being John Bernthal didn't really add like make me think always oh, like innocent yeah. type of thing and it, uh, but it's like, like it works i guess i don't love that reveal i feel like the way especially it being a fictional story the way i feel like there was a more especially a more clever way to kind of approach this and i understand how jeremy renner's character exactly found out that it was like just the oil workers and that the boyfriend was dead because yeah. like i feel like stuff moments like that weren't communicated very well um, cause like, do you remember the body that's like out in the snow and is like getting yeah. picked out by a bird? Was that supposed to be the boyfriend? Was that I supposed to be John was. Bernthal? I think like, it was the boyfriend or the girl. I can't exactly remember. But no, but they found. Remember they so they found the girl first, right? With the, oh like, wait, the no, tents, you're right. So my mistake. Right? It was the yeah. And, Jesus. But then yeah. they like found. So I guess that was the boyfriend. But like, yeah. it didn't. It didn't feel like they like were like okay, who's who's this? Like it never felt like they took a moment to be like okay, who who is this? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I guess see, see that's the that's guess, the kind of thing that we were talking about because I mean, like it's something that you know is is more implied, but it's it's not exactly like stated. Not, well, it wasn't yeah, clear at all know. until the end. Like we yeah, didn't and know, it's because us so as the audience, like, we don't know how far yeah. this like this whole incident goes. It could be like that could be another dead person. Like who knows? Maybe there was another girlfriend or something or something. Yeah, there I know. Another, like, they, like the boyfriend killed a, one of the other the oil an oil worker who w- helped him witness it and then said he had left because yeah. of something or he like whatever. Right. Yeah, but so it, we're not like, like the idea like that idea isn't communicated extremely effectively. So once yeah. there, so I guess. Jeremy Renner knew it was the boyfriend, and then once they saw that, like, people had walked to and from, like, the trail, like, the mountain area, he was like, okay, um, there was a lot of people, there, there was multiple people in on this. The, yeah. Also, the moment that, like, um, when he radios in to the sheriff, and the sheriff's like, watch out, Jane, is that the exact moment that she gets shot just feels re- kind of dumb. Like, I, I wish that wasn't even done at all, because it's just like, oh, well, you know, it's like... 
he said to watch out. Yeah, it's like it's completely feels completely RNG. How like oh, he just happens to get the radio through at this moment, kind of thing. It's completely yeah. up to the writer. It doesn't feel like it has to be placed in the law of the world. Um, yeah, no, but it definitely breaks the tension of the scene because that's when you know everything just fucking. Goes. I would have just rather all of a sudden she's shot and you're just like, what the fuck? And then that's what and and then us as the audience would have made it would have made more sense why everything just burst into fucking chaos, right? Yeah. Because I it, like yeah. once I knew the oil like workers were like bad, it's like less revealed when they all of a sudden start shooting because of the other guy shooting, right? And it just this timing also feels. Like, kind of, like, did it take him that long to pick up his shotgun and then shoot, like, as soon as she knocked? Yeah. It's like, eh. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, again, I don't think that's some of the weaker stuff overall. The music's good, I guess. That's another thing that's part of yeah. this film. I think the sound's well done. Um, and the messages, I think, are a little more honed in on, but I feel like that also kind of sacrifices the story, so I kind of wish it was a little more like Sicario, and where, like, yeah. it, I think it's very tough to get ideas like the ones that, in this film, and also Sicario, a, while having them in a very, very interesting, well-done plot. Yeah, no, and it is... I feel is like the plot gets sacrificed yeah. a little bit for yeah. the ideas. But, I mean, like, I, I guess he wanted to... I guess maybe Taylor Sheridan to want to be very careful because, like, this is, like, a big issue that's been going on. I think it's, it like... Is. It's, a, it's a bit more of a touchy issue than it, the cartel situation, I would argue. I mean, like, just because, like, there's been so little effort being put in to, like, fix this problem instead of, yeah. like, the cartel issue, right? So maybe that's say. why he felt like he needed to overcompensate with his delivery of this message. So Yeah, and I guess yeah. it just... Another thing that like somewhat irks me is that literally the only like the only two, the only indigenous women in this film, uh, it's like, not it's are the two of them are murdered right, and then the other one is or at least we don't exactly know what happened to Jeremy Wren's daughter's character, and then the other one is a grieving mother who almost sort of really scars herself. That's another thing that I don't feel was handled too well because I felt like the way it was shot felt like she was like killing herself so i don't under, like us like i felt like why aren't you calling the like why aren't you calling the police like some hospital or like trying to get like or try to help her and like bandage her or something it yeah. didn't because it, it totally looked like she was maybe like committing suicide rather than like potentially scarring herself i'm not sure yeah. what practice exactly sheridan was trying to portray there because obviously she's alive at the end of the film you see her sh like sleeping in the daughter's bed right yeah. And it's like, I don't know, I don't think that was handled very well. Um, also, for it being about indigenous people, it felt like... I, I don't think this is necessarily Taryn Sheridan's fault, but for not having an indigenous protagonist in a film about indigenous people, like it's like, it's a little... Especially being it's a, not a, based on a true story, so it's not like this yeah. actually happened kind of thing. I mean, it would it's be like, nice if we would, if we could get that one day. I mean, I think that would be uh, like a great step forward, you know. In yeah, terms of, and, and you know, I feel like it would have made sense for this film. Yeah, because like, even like instead there, of Jeremy it's Renner, it could have been an indigenous film. man. Yeah, like I'm pretty there's sure just there's so an indigenous many... actor who could easily yeah. handle that role, especially since yeah, it doesn't require that many much. There's indigenous actors out there, but like you're right though, because this isn't the first film that's kind of tackled an indigenous like based story, but not had the indigenous people as the main characters, yeah. right? It's also like the daughter yeah. character played by Kelsey as Bill. She's more Asian than she is indigenous, so she's like half Asian, quarter white, and then quarter indigenous. So I yeah. guess it works well enough, but it's like I feel like there was also could maybe get more. I don't know. It just I you. Could what percentage are you comfortable with, Daniel? I I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I, that well, that one is in the middle. What ratio would you like, sir? What ratio would you like? Come on. Like, <laughs> it, I feel like half would have. Yeah, been okay, sense, I guess that's fair. That's what she actually, her character actually is. But at least she was actually somewhat part indigenous. Because yeah. I mean, like, I think it'd be way worse if they just got like an Asian person and just said, "Yo, she's she's indigenous now for this movie." Yeah. No, I guess because they have I done mean, that before in other movies. I, I know mean, that. To be fair, that. she is more Asian than. Um, yeah, I know, but I mean, but like, it's like, yeah. and I don't, it's not a massive issue. I do think if she was like only an eighth, it would have been even. I don't even know if I can confirm she's even like a quarter because her. So her mom is apparently descendant of white and indigenous Americans, which th that that can mean fuck all. It could mean like her grandparents were indigenous, but 
whatever. I'm uh, yeah. it's like I don't know. I feel like the casting is like and it's not like the actors replacing them were particularly great. I can sometimes understand why you can like maybe go especially if it's more ambiguous like that you go for a more like an actor who you believe fits the role better but it's yeah. not like they were amazing amazing i feel like anyone could have played these characters they weren't extremely special um whatever use of production design and cgi was like fine yeah. um and again it being like not based on a true like i don't know the inspired by real events part felt a little misguiding yeah, because I mean, like, like, I don't know. I, I yeah, because like, it wasn't. I mean, like, although obviously yes, like, events like, like this from, happen, from real stories happen. Yeah, but like, e that kind of moniker is is mainly uh, you know associated with like specific true stories. Yeah, and I don't know if that was the best idea to like like with real there. people. Because right. there's so many other films that take inspiration from real life events, but they don't need to put that in there. I just thought that was kind of stupid. As well, well I feel like. And again, I, I, that felt like much too much of a political agenda move because yeah. at that point, it's like Taylor's truly trying to see, it's like, oh, you should believe these are real people because it happens. And obviously it does. But then yeah. to kind of somewhat trick the audience into believing these are real people feels a yeah. little bit manipulative. Yeah, I mean, like, cause, uh, unfortunately for a lot of these indigenous women, like, it, it's not a happy ending. I mean, like, I know the FBI, like, would rarely get involved. I mean, like, I'm, not, I'm sure that would not very, ha I'm sure that wouldn't happen very often. I mean, like, I don't even know how often the RCMP gets involved up here and that sort of stuff or how serious they take it. Because there's so many unsolved cases, you know, in, in yeah, regards yeah. to stuff like this. And I don't know, it's just... I don't know, I guess it was trying to maybe, like, show, like, what could happen if people actually, like, gave a shit, I guess. Maybe that was his political agenda, Somewhat, but... I don't know. Yeah. I guess. I mean, yeah. I feel like there have been a couple of cases where people are giving a shit, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah and I feel like, again, that's maybe stuff. somewhat part of the inspired by true events part. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I mean, like, I'm, I guess, I'm sure, like, it's impossible that, like, that no case has been, like, you know, like, unsolved. I mean, like, yeah. I'm sure there are a few that have been solved, but that's just not the, uh, it's not the most and, yeah, common. And I don't want to completely fault this film, because it does feel yeah. like a step in the right direction. No, for real. And, like, I But I feel like, like it was also yeah. somewhat, because the Weinstein Company was originally behind this. Ooh. Not to say that he would have necessarily been like I like the company would have been like oh we're only funded because it has star power and that they necessarily they needed Olsen and Runner to get this movie made. I, I, that could that's possible. Um, yeah. I don't know. As far as what I'm thinking, because I don't know, the fact that Taylor Sheridan's a little bit on an M Night trajectory. My advice is apparently you shouldn't co-write. Because all of the th screenplays he's done by himself have been better, except maybe Sicario, the second one. But like, yeah, uh, I barely count that. It's interesting yeah. though how many films he's been able to get in a short period of time. Like he did, yeah, let's put um, his work. He in. did Sicario, yeah. um, Hell or High Water, and Wind River three years in a row. Yeah, Obviously I mean, he like, wasn't directing yeah. two of them, but um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of interesting, like where he's come from, though, because I mean, like I know him, I knew him before, like all this stuff, like he was on uh, Sons of Anarchy, right? Which in itself okay. is sort of a little bit of a neo western in some aspects, right? It's not yeah. completely there, but there, it does. There's a lot of elements of that in there, which is yeah, interesting that he would, you know, kind of start to, I don't know, if, like, I guess, kind of specialize in these types of films yeah. now. It's, so he also, which is cool. Like, yeah, I love the I, whole neo western yeah, genre. It's such kind a great of, idea. Yeah, he yeah. people kind of consider Sicario, Hell or High Water, in this movie a little bit of a s trilogy. Yeah. There is obviously similar elements. I, I don't know yeah. if I necessarily agree with that, um, yeah. but yeah, um, he. Pr I don't know. I think obviously when he works with a good crew like Denis and Roger, he can make a pretty great film. Hopefully, yeah. he can work with some more talented people, or maybe try to. Like, Sorkin, I would say the same thing about Sorkin, I think, you know, he obviously should get try to get better as a director, but there is also maybe some times where he should try to focus more on what he's better at, because I think he's definitely better at writing, both Sorkin and Sheridan, so they yeah. should maybe try to let make a script specifically for a director they'd like to work with, because um, yeah. I'm pretty sure people would be willing to work with either of them, for sure. Cool. Um, you know, once you work with people like Denis Villeneuve and David Fincher, I feel like almost anyone will work with you at that point. Especially yeah, when you have an Oscar like Sorkin. Um, oh, yeah. Um, and you, writ you wrote The Social Network. But anyways, um, yeah. So, like, I think he should try to get better as a director, obviously. Yeah. But I do think 
should maybe try to he's take a break at some Thomas, point so it's not like it's and direct something. Him. Yeah, I think he yeah. should try to take, try to direct, have someone direct one of his screenplays. Yeah. Try to find some better people to work with. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, but he's clearly a pretty talented guy. Definitely. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's had a little bit of a week of 2021. Other than his movie, he also helped write that Tom Clancy movie with Michael B. Yeah. Jordan, which that one was barely, that one was barely did anything, um, and barely yeah. anyone saw it as well. So, Fortunately, yeah, yeah. no. I'm, I'll I'll watch his films in the future, but I'm hoping he goes back, maybe towards these type of films because there aren't too many of these types of films. These feel a little bit lacking, rather than what he did in Those Who Wish Me Dead. <laughs> yeah. I saw your mom in the mirror. Jesus. Yeah, mom. <laughs> you realize if you want to see it down here, you don't have to do that, right? You oh, your mom is like a normal human being. Aiden says hi. Hi, Mrs. Zhang. How you doing? Aiden says hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyways, it's a good movie. Yeah, Under definitely. Good, um, what good. would you give it for in terms of a score? Don't be too much I, we're still doing the podcast. <laughs> Because you, Aiden pointed you out, and at that point, what was I supposed what? to do? Ignore it? He saw me. He saw. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Why do you? If he didn't see, if he did, if he didn't see you, why do you think I would like would have acknowledged you? Me? There's a mirror. <laughs> right there. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> All right, right. Um, let's finish this up. Um, All right. Well, anyways, in terms of the score, then, what would you give this film? It's a good film. I, I do think there's some weaknesses. Yep. Uh, seven out of ten, maybe a little bit closer to a six, but um, still solid. Right. I'd probably have to give it half a score above you. I'd probably give it seven and a half. I still love this film. I don't like it as much the first time I saw it, which is okay. I still enjoyed watching it, but yeah, I'd probably want to watch it again. You know, it's yeah. definitely up for me. It's one of those ones I, I do. Yeah, I don't... It'll be a while. I, I might watch it again. I wouldn't be... Like, if someone... It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my Mom, God. take one thing at a time. <laughs> or do that. That that works, too. Yeah, Yo, Daniel, we gotta do a blooper reel one day. These are funny. Seriously. <laughs> I guess I'll start storing them. Yeah. Maybe. Um, anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I might return to this film. Like, it's like if someone's yeah. playing it or if you recommend it, I'll, again, I'll know if that's possible. But, like, because there's obviously a lot of other movies we can do. Uh, I don't expect us to repeat a movie we've already done the podcast for probably forever. But, um, still a good movie. Uh, yeah. solid. Um, yeah. anyways, before <laughs> we wrap up the episode, um, yep. do you have any film recommendations from the past year? I don't have a film recommendation, but. I finished the first episode of Loki today, and, uh, yeah. I still haven't watched it. Okay, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you, obviously, but I'm going to tell you, I did enjoy it. You know, it's an interesting setup. It's not, like, super amazing. I thought, I think it's kind of more along the lines of, like, in terms of quality to, um, what's it called? Uh, Captain America and, uh, not Captain America, sorry, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Okay. You know? It's like, it's not WandaVision. I think it's kind of in between those in terms of quality, but it sort I mean, of leans a little bit more towards... WandaVision, the, uh, by the end of it, kind of averaged out to be about the yeah. same as Falcon Winter Soldier, in my opinion. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I'm talking about, like, you know, earlier WandaVision. Yeah, my hope for Loki, I guess, is that yeah. it gets better if this episode's kind of... Yeah, like I mean, like, it, it's got quite the setup. I have to admit that. I mean, like, I think it t- shows a lot of potential. Yeah. There's so many interesting, like, things they can do. I mean, like, obviously we... um. I mean, this isn't a main plot point, but, like, they show that Loki has, like, you know, done stuff, like, meddling in the past before, and then they're going to, obviously, they're going to set up some more stuff in the future, which is cool. So, uh, we saw one scene, he was D.B. Cooper. I think that was really cool. So, Mm -hmm. look out for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. My recommendation is The World's End by Edgar Wright. Have you seen it yet? Yes. I love that one. It's great. It's It's not my favorite out of the Cornetto trilogy, but I think it's, like, the weakest. I yeah. think Edgar Wright film in general, but it's still pretty yeah. great. Um, still pretty yeah. good. Anyways, um, yes. yeah, you should watch it. 2013 film. I will watch it again, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, as far as next episode, we have another guest. Yes. Who is one of the best people. Um, yes. You'll Yo, identify you him by Please his hat. 
I'm yeah, get, he'll wear it. I don't know why he wouldn't. Um, he okay, I, I hope he does. That would be great, um, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, if he does, if he shows up without it, we'll be like, it, Jason, who's coming. Yeah, on, we'll, we'll, we'll bully him. him into we'll wearing. bully him into putting on his hat. Because <laughs> um, yeah. no one wants yeah. to see his hair. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, no. He's a friend of ours. He's coming on the podcast. And hit the film that he has recommended, recommended for us to watch is uh, Treasure Planet. Yeah. Which I have not seen. So, um, yeah. that'll be interesting. I heard it's yeah. solid. Um, yes. As far as the other film, we're going to be doing In the Heights. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing yeah. In the Heights is the other film. New film from John M. Chu. Has very good reviews of Rotten Metacritic. Yep. Uh, looks to be a potential Best Picture contender um, based on the Lynn manuel Miranda musical. So, there's a lot of things going for this film. I like parts of the soundtrack already. Hopefully, yep. it'll be better in the movie, even. Um, <laughs> I do have to complain, I might as well do it on the podcast real quick, about the fact that the only theaters available here in Ontario are currently drive-in ones, or will and be on, as of Friday, and, and for so, some reason, they don't yeah. have In the Heights, I emailed them about that, they better be like, Warner Brothers didn't allow us to get the film, because if they didn't, don't, I'm going to be pissed, <laughs> and unfortunately, I can't not, I can't boycott them slash go to other places right now, because like, there's only, like, they're like one of... As far, especially in the GTA area, they're the only theater, drive-in theater around. And then even they have most of the ones, the of the other ones in Ontario, there's only like a couple that are independent because they have a yeah. small chain here. So, and they obviously don't carry in the Heights either. So I'm upset at that. Um, hopefully, it's. A, I'm praying it's a mistake and that they just like, you know, because their website isn't fully up, they haven't changed everything. But if they have Peter Rabbit 2 instead of In the Heights, I'm going to be really mad. And I'm yeah. going to probably have to watch it at home like a peasant. But um, <laughs> <laughs> even though that's what I've had, we've been doing for pretty much every single movie. But yeah. this is one I really wanted to see in theaters. And the fact that I could go to a drive-in, but then I can't see In the Heights, a movie that's supposed to be number one in the States and probably will be still even in Canada. Yeah. I can't see it. Has me kind of mad, but... um. I'm praying it's a mistake, but anyways, um, if you, if somehow this gets to anyone who knows of the drive-in theater, or the, well, I don't know, drive-in five or whatever, that chain, uh, fuck you, and hopefully, um, unless you tell me that it was a mistake and fix things, or if it was Warner Brothers' fault, in that case, fuck you, Warner Brothers, <laughs> but um, anyways, now that I've said fuck you, Warner Brothers, I think it's a good time to wrap up, make sure you go check out uh, our pages, again, Aiden on Instagram, GBD Reviews reviewing on youtube is myself and uh we'll see you guys in the next one i'm gonna go email them again because they better have a fucking good explanation all right all right go care mode daniel bye-bye